if you're a person of faith and you're wondering if um, God is telling you to stay in the marriage or leave the marriage, if that's something you've been pondering and you're really wanting to seek God's will in this, I want to share with you um, an experience I've had and my own personal experience in my own faith. And as, as an ordained United Methodist pastor, um, I don't have all the answers, but I, I'm here to share with you some perspective because there's some crazy advice out there and I want to make sure that what you're hearing is um, healthy and it's encouraging and um, it really helps you deepen your faith with God instead of telling you things that's just not appropriate. Because believe me, I've heard some crazy things out there and I'm going to share those with you right after this. I was on Facebook uh, the other day and I follow um, a number of people, but one of them as is, um, is a pastor, I'm not going to say who it is, but uh, he, I really liked him. I used some of his stuff in the marriage ministry I lead at my church. So I had a lot of um, respect for him and, and I really liked his stuff. So I'm reading one of his posts on Facebook and I was blown away. Well, the first part of it I actually agreed with. He talked about how um, a member of his church had seen another pastor um, when she had found out her husband was having an affair and the pastor had told her, just pray to God and God will fix everything. You know, you don't have to worry about it. God will take care of this. And he's like, that's horrible advice. And I agree. That's horrible advice. Let, let me be clear by what I mean by that, because I do believe God is powerful and I do believe God can do things we can't do. But I also believe that God fully equipped us and gave us a lot of empowerment to do things for ourselves. We have two arms. We have two legs. We have the capability of earning money and doing things and, and taking care of business. So when things like this happen to us, we need to do our part. We need to step up and do what God has already equipped us to do. It's the stuff that's out of our control that we give to God. So whereas I'm sure the pastor in this scenario, you know, he, he meant well. <laughs> Let's just say that. I completely agree with this post by the pastor I admire um, that that was bad advice. But then this pastor that I used to admire went on to say something that was like the extreme opposite. He said, in his opinion, what we should do when we find out about the affair is we should immediately file for legal self-separation. Just get out to get away. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> you went from this to this? That makes no sense. So I've actually unfollowed this person now because he doubled down. He, he, apparently he got a lot of flack on that. And he doubled down. He's like, no. And he almost made it sound like those of us who choose to stay and work through this after we find out about the affair are weak and we're stupid and we don't know what we're doing. So I said, absolutely not. I've unfollowed him and I've already made the commitment. I'm not going to use any of his materials in my marriage ministry. So anyway, back to these extremes. There are some religious people out there, uh, people of faith who will espouse the let go and let God kind of philosophy saying, you know, God will take care of it. Just let God do this. And then there are some out there who are going to be like militant. Oh, heck no, he didn't. You file for legal separation. If he wants you back, he's going to have to earn you back. You can always get remarried. And these are like two crazy extremes on a spectrum. It's almost a black and white way of looking at this. And if you're listening to this right now, wouldn't you agree? There's a lot of gray. I mean, you know, if your husband's remorseful and he wants to work on the marriage and he wants you to go to counseling and he's trying, you know, to mend the marriage and you want to do this too, that's key. I mean, if you want this too, why would we not try? Why would we not do everything we could possibly do to heal the marriage. So I say all this to say, first of all, clergy people, people of faith, they're just as flawed in nature as any other human. None of us are perfect, okay? So if you're looking for someone that you admire in faith to give you, you know, the answer, I don't know that that's available. I don't know that it's realistic to expect another human to give you the perfect answer to your situation. 
but I will encourage you to be cautious. Just be really cautious about who you listen to. If their advice sounds a little crazy, like when I read that post on Facebook, I was like, what? Yeah, it probably isn't for you. And they're not speaking on behalf of God, okay? If you really want to know what God wants you to do in a given situation, I'll give you some things to look for. This is what helped me. First and foremost, God's motivation is always love. I mean, always. God wants us to be happy. God has plans for us, plans for, you know, really good and loving, wonderful things in our future. That's what God wants for us. I'm of a faith that understands that God is not the puppeteer of our lives. God is not moving us around. I also don't believe in predestination. So I think we make our own futures. We have free will. And what we choose to do with it's up to us. So if God's motivation is always love, God wants us to choose what's best for us. And I know that may seem like a cop-out thing to say, but I can't speak to what God wants for you. But I know in my case, I knew first and foremost that God did not want me to put myself in a harmful situation, to knowingly put myself into harm's way. So I had very healthy boundaries. And I knew that if he was in touch with her again, we would separate. We had two separations. God wouldn't want me to knowingly stay in a relationship with another person who is cheating on me. If I knew he was cheating on me, I needed to protect myself. That's what God wanted for me, to do the right thing for me. So that's number one. Okay, God's motivation is always love. But God will also give us what we need to endure. And I know because I was with you, there were times that I felt like I was at the bottom of this dark well and there was this little teeny spot of light way up there somewhere. And I couldn't figure out how to get to the light. Like, I knew that, that I was going to be okay. I guess I knew that kind of on a surface level. But I couldn't figure out how to get to the okay part. It's like I knew it would come, but I didn't know how. And so I kept waiting on God to open this magical door to say, oh, oh, here you go, or text me or something, but it never happened. Maybe you feel like that right now. I don't know. But what I found, especially now that I'm 10 years past the first D-Day and I can look back, God was with me every step of the way. I mean, every step of the way. There was not one moment when my God, my Lord and Savior, was not right there giving me everything I needed in that moment. And I cannot tell you how many people God kind of maneuvered into my path. You know, I knew that God was speaking through some people, people of faith, people who assured me I was not alone, people who offered to help, offered to be an ear, offered to just listen when I just needed to vent. God's motivation is always love. God wants good for us and wants us to choose good for ourselves. And then God is always present and will give us everything we need to get through this. Friends, that's what I know. That is what I know to be true. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, I can assure you of those two things when it comes to my God, my Lord and Savior. As a Christian, that's how I believe things to be. Now, how that applies to your situation, I'm not 100% sure. But I can tell you that God wants good for you. And if good for you is to stay and heal your marriage, God bless you. And God will be with you. And even if it doesn't work out, even if your husband goes back to the affair partner, whatever happens down the road, you are never alone God is with you. And you know what else? If you do decide, you're just going to go get that legal separation and you're just done. And you know, in your heart and in your mind, you just cannot do this. You cannot reconcile with this man. God's with you then too. That's okay. And, and that pastor that I revered, I'm not trying to say that that's not a valid option to separate. Separation is always a valid option. But that's not the only option. And that's kind of what he said. 
almost made it sound like you're stupid if you don't do that. There's a lot of gray, you guys. A lot of gray. We live in the gray, and we will live in the gray for a long, long time. I'm still living in the gray, and I kind of like that. I think that's how we were created to live. So pray about this. Invite God to be part of your decision-making process. Journal. Write it down. Where did you see God today? How is God speaking to you? And, and you know, what does that look like? And where do you think God is leading you? Keep track of all that. Talk to trusted people about that. I think what you'll find along the way is that God's been talking to you the whole time. Please seek out trusted people of faith. Don't just rely on one voice. Don't just rely on my voice. Really listen to where God is speaking to you. We have a, a private Facebook group I'd love for you to join, um, and it's just for wives like us. And we talk about stuff like this in the group. And uh, I've created a really awesome couple of free resources that are linked below, especially the video. If, you, if you're looking for some help like right now, I've created this wonderful training video that kind of lists a bunch of things. It's got strategies, tips, ways in which, you know, we can get past it. doesn't matter where you are in your recovery process. There's stuff in there for everybody. And I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, and in the meantime, I, I just lift all of us in prayer. I will continue to lift us all in prayer because I know how challenging this is. And if you're not a person of faith and you actually watch this whole video, you know, just let that just soak in. Just let that be information that you have. If you're of a different faith, the same thing applies. It doesn't matter where your faith lies. Just remember not to listen to just one voice. And remember things just really aren't black and white. That's really kind of what faith tells us, right? It's about grace. It's about understanding humanity. It's about understanding that we're all broken. And there are all parts of us that um, are not super awesome. So anyway, however you decide to move forward with this, uh, may God be with you in this process.